My name is Thorax, and this is Strategy for Busy People. If you've got a few minutes, I'll tell you what to play. You know we like space stuff here on Strategy for Busy People, and this episode we're looking at Per Aspera from T Tulune Industries. I've got about 26 hours in this game. There seems to be a lot of interest in Mars recently between board and video games. I love city builders, and I love space stuff, and I love transformational resource management, and Per Aspera gives me all three. It's a Martian city builder focused on terraforming the red planet with the underlying mechanics of mining resources, transforming them with factories, and then using those things to ultimately power the terraforming machinery that will alter the surface of the planet. You, the player, are taking the role of a nearly sentient artificial intelligence software whose job is to oversee the terraforming of Mars. At least, that's the story that the campaign mode presents. There are some sandbox and multiplayer features, but I didn't touch any of those. I guess that's where combat would feature more prevalently, but it's practically an afterthought in the campaign. At first glance, the game starts out doing all of the things right. You build little worker drone hubs to move the items around from source mine to destination factory, and all is well. But things start to fall apart a bit in short order. It's really unclear, even after reading some community discussion posts, how to improve the efficiency of your operations. Sure, you can upgrade the roads once you research those technologies, but it doesn't seem to make much difference. You can spam a ton of worker hubs around a mine, but that too doesn't seem to make much difference. In the end, I think that I was wildly inefficient, and the game frequently indicated that I was underproducing on some resources, but it never got too out of hand. And then there's starting up new landing sites. It's the same grindy sequence of events over and over and over. Yes, you can research a better landing site, but it's still the same grind of building the right mines in the right order to feed the right factories in the right order so that the site can ultimately become self-sufficient. And unfortunately, if you just spam down everything you need, the game is not smart enough to build things in the right order. You end up needing to nanny each landing site until it gets to a certain sufficiency level, but you're just going to connect it in the end to the main area anyway. It's a bit annoying. The game does bog you down with some degree of micromanagement, but it's very different from the management of individual colonists in a game like Surviving Mars, which I also have a lot of hours in. The underlying mechanic of improving things to get some colonists who help research things to expand the tech tree to do more things faster is pretty common, and mostly well done. The designers put a lot of thought into the actual terraforming theories that are out there and implemented them pretty well in the game. There are some janky user experience problems that will probably be repaired over time, as the devs seem to be releasing patches somewhat regularly. For example, it took me forever to realize that I could add extra spaceports to a mission to do that mission multiple times in parallel. It just didn't seem obvious to me, and a single tutorial step or tooltip probably would have helped me with that. The backstory behind the game is a typical East versus West one that's mostly executed well, and frankly is part of the reason I kept playing. About the 18th hour, I was getting bored, but was thinking I was pretty close to finishing the terraforming, so I grounded out. On my trademark three-point score scale of avoid, meh, and I forgot to eat, I managed to finish, but it was a bit of a slog, and I had to restart once. I'm glad I played it, but I probably won't go back to explore more or try to complete things faster. Meh. 